In the freight market, oil tankers are classified into three categories, according to their deadweight tonnage or their carrying capacity. For our purposes, it is useful to consider the largest supertankers the ULCCs as a separate category. So we have ULCCs, ultra-large crude oil carriers, which are tankers with a deadweight tonnage of between 325,000 and 600,000. This means that their carrying capacity is between 2.5 and 4.5 million barrels of crude oil. Or to put it simply, their carrying capacity is equivalent to 20 days throughput for a large refinery. A number of these giants were commissioned in the 70s of the last century, but some did not survive the changes in the oil industry following the oil shocks and have been laid up or scrapped. The second category is the VLCCs, very large crude oil carriers. These are tankers of more than 160,000 deadweight tonnage. They are used for voyage from the Arabian Gulf, westwards to the Caribbean, United States or Europe, and eastwards to Southeast Asia, like Japan, South Korea and Singapore. The largest size VLCCs are used for Europe and the United States. When in ballast, they can transit the Suez Canal. The third category is the Suez Max. The capacity of these tankers is between 100,000 and 160,000 deadweight tonnage. They are capable of transiting the Suez Canal fully laden. They are also used for voyages from West Africa to the Caribbean and the United States and for long-haul voyages from the North Sea loading ports. The last category is the Aframax. The size of these tankers is between 80,000 and 100,000 deadweight tonnage. They are used for regional movements to the North Sea, Mediterranean, Caribbean and the United States. This category is the largest that can be accepted fully laden by American ports. Now, take a look at the following figure. It shows the relative sizes of these tankers. As seen here, a ULCC is almost twice the size of an Aframax. The breakdown of the world tanker fleet by size is now displayed on screen. Notice here that petroleum product tankers, which are typically smaller than an Aframax have the lion's share. These tankers have a deadweight tonnage less than 80,000. Most of the world fleet, in fact, some two-thirds, is owned by independent ship owners. The rest is owned by oil companies, with the proportion owned by the majors falling, and that of the national companies rising, particularly after the first oil shock in 1973. Because of the stagnation in oil demand and the development of non-OPEC oil production that was near to the consuming countries, oil freight requirements fell, giving rise to a surplus of shipping capacity over demand. This led many ship owners to mothball some of the large tankers like VLCCs. At the beginning of the 80s of the last century, freight rates at that time were frequently depressed and too low for ship owners to cover their fleet operating costs. Today, the world oil tanker fleet can be described as follows. The fleet is dominated by large tankers and two-thirds of the tankers are owned by independent ship owners. Publicly quoted oil companies and national oil companies share the rest. The world fleet is also aging, since 30% of VLCCs and 20% of Suezmax are more than 20 years old. 